How's it going? Um, I'm sitting in a car, but there won't be a car as such in this video because I just wanted to do a, a video just to let normal viewers of YouTube, car reviews and beyond get a sense of what it's feeling like to be on the other end of the whole thing um, right now. And I think a lot of it is, is driven by anti-EV sentiment, which is, there's kind of a couple of angles from it. One is people that are, well, probably not even just two different scenarios actually. You've got people who have bought cars, call them early adopters if you like, although I don't know if I necessarily agree with that, that people buying cars in 2023, 2022 are early adopters. And then you've got people that, and the general, they'll use the term milk float uh, to describe an EV. So they kind of generally stand out all by themselves because, you know, that gives the game away straight away. They're just anti-EV, which is cool, by the way. I, I, I don't have any, you know, this YouTube channel is for all kinds of cars. Um, I run a petrol car myself. So... I, you know, I don't have an issue with people that don't get EVs or whatever, or don't want to get EVs, that's fine. Um, and I also don't think EVs are the one size solution to everything. Um, but what is starting to really annoy me, um, like first of all, this is YouTube and car reviews is my full time job, right? So I am making videos about cars I don't get paid by any car companies. I get YouTube revenue. So if you watch an ad at the start of a video, whoever that channel belongs to gets, I think it's 20% of whatever YouTube. I don't even know if it's 20%, to be honest with you. It doesn't feel like it's 20%. Um, and for the last year and a bit, I've, you know, full-time gone at this with a, with a view to, you know, just make as many car videos, get as many reviews in, per calendar year as I can and lash out the content, right? All good. And, and by the way, nearly 40,000 subscribers, so many of you have been amazing, so really appreciate all the support, and if you've been here from day one, thank you, really appreciate it. But um, my, my annoyance at the moment is just, you go to a venue or a different country in some cases, you know, and people see the Instagram side of traveling to look at cars and yeah, it's lovely and the hotels are lovely and all that stuff. But actually the reality is you're away from your family for maybe sometimes five days at a time. You're up the crack of dawn to get flights. You're working from the crack of dawn in the morning. You're still working at night time because you're gone to a dinner with people from the brands. They're talking shop. So uh, the point is um, when anything is your job, it's a job. Right. So uh, I, as I've described to someone this morning, you know, who said that I was uh, being untruthful about uh, a particular car review, I said, but I'm not being untruthful. Everything in, in this review is honest. And I said, and here's another thing. It's like when someone comments under a video, it's the same as me walking into your job, announcing to all of your colleagues that I don't think you're good at it and then dropping the mic and walking off again. And by the way, no one knows who I am in that office because I've arrived in with a totally anonymous uh, handle with a load of numbers at the end of it. No profile picture, no nothing. And I just go, yeah, this is crap and this is rubbish and uh, why aren't you telling the truth about EV prices? And, I'm, and then they just walk away. Um, and I, th this is the thing, I, I literally, all of the last EV reviews I've done mention oh, the price is too high or the price needs to come down or hey, the price has come down and now is a really good time. Like take, everyone's focusing on ID4 at the moment. Now is an amazing time to buy an ID4. But if I say that, someone will probably say, oh, Volkswagen are paying you to say, they're not, they're not. Volkswagen don't pay me anything. So, but that is a statement of fact. Now is a better time. And I think some of the things that people need to get their heads around and you know, when you explain this, then you're accused of being uh, pro EV or whatever. So the price of making a battery for an electric car has come down by about 40% in the last year. Huge change in the manufacturing process. You've also got brands that are now 
building their own factories, they've got their own chemical engineers, they wear the, the coats, the lab coats that you'd imagine they have with the car brands on them. They work for the car brands and they can extract the raw materials and make a battery in the factory, goes under the car, leaves the factory. Um, and because car companies will get more control over that, the prices will fall. Then you've got EV adjustment prices, which depending on who you talk to, will give you different reasons. One will say it's early adopters. Two will say we've been so focused on higher capacity batteries that now there's more options coming in and people are going back to a used market and they're not buying the most expensive car that they all originally thought they needed. And then let's call it as, as it is. You just, you've, car companies are in business to make profit. And if they could charge nearly 60 grand for an ID4 a couple of years ago, they did. They will tell you that, well, again, producing the car costs more money, semiconductors, blah, 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 blah. Who knows what it is? But the point is, I, I don't make cars. I don't design cars. I don't. Like another comment this morning from a guy um, on a Citroen video. Why aren't you telling the truth? Why aren't you saying this is a Peugeot and it's also a Vauxhall? And I'm kind of going, I've spoken about Stellantis in loads of videos. They're this big company that own loads of brands. It's not a secret. It's, it's on the internet. It's literally on the internet. If you want to find that out. And I'm like, I can't in every video go, oh, by the way, uh, this is a Volkswagen, but it's also owned by Audi. And did you know they've got connections in Porsche and Bentley? And you're just like, and it's like this, this new wave of, it's a bit like the riots that happened in Dublin. And it's a bit like the Ireland is full mantra, which it isn't, by the way. Uh, and it's, it's like, I, I heard a thing about EV, so I'm going to come on under every EV video that exists on YouTube. And I'm going to spout a load of waffle about it, and then I'm going to walk away. I did a video last week. Now, sometimes brands will offer you money to talk about a specific product. I don't do them that often, but I did one for the fuel HVO, right? So it's... An alter it's diesel, but it's an alternative, less emissions-based diesel. What comes out of the exhaust is supposedly better for the environment, right, Grant? You don't have to buy it, but you can. And that was a sponsored post, so it clearly says, add, uh, hashtag SP, all the usual. Someone replied and said, uh, uh, you've, you've sold out. Um, why don't you go back to the radio station you worked in if you need money? And I'm like, right, so I meant to live on fresh air. Is you just you do YouTube videos and the magic fairies pay your mortgage, they buy your food, they put it on the table, they dress your kids, the magic fairies. Why don't you go back to the? <laughs> so I was like, okay. So I just I have no issue with people. I, I welcome the more comments behind the video or below the video, the better. Amazing. Engagement, talking about the cars, it's the new, like, car forums are a massive thing, and some still are. A lot of them have died a death. The new way of having a car forum is now you, you comment below the car, and everyone's got different opinions, and some hate this car, and they think this car looks terrible, and those wheels are crap, and it's a rip-off. All good. That's just opinion stuff. But it's the constant anti-EV sentiment that is from I, I feel a group that aren't even in the market they're never spending 117,000 euro on a seven seater electric SUV anyway um, it's like me going on a video of a Ferrari going this is ridiculous it's 300,000 euro who can afford this I, I can't but that's the price <laughs> I can't control that so it just made, I mean, and then some of the comments really make me laugh. There was a video I put up yesterday and someone said, uh, the state of the carpet in that video, you think they would have put, and like it genuinely made me laugh. The carpet actually, when you look back in hindsight, was terrible. But again, that's not, the brand aren't, I mean, some will go to a hotel and say, okay, what's the room like? Yeah, this, this suits. Maybe they just got a car last minute and they just needed a venue close by to everybody. And, you know. So I just think um, some of the anti-EV stuff, some of it is, is led by, informed people absolutely and then others are watching other other people and they're basing their thing on the equivalent of the online version of going out of the pub people who have a passing interest in the cars hear or see this they run away with it the chinese whispers get worse you turn on the windscreen wipers and the battery drops 100 kilometers and it's just like 
when you're putting a huge amount of effort and time and resources and never mind even like even getting a car getting a car for me is an hour and a half round trip you got to go pick it up you got to sit in the m50 you got to deal with the traffic you've got to come home you've got to find a location to film the car sometimes you've got to wash the car again because so many builders don't give a damn and the roads are in shite uh, then you film it and you research the car and you get all the different specs and the facts and the battery size, the capacity, the charging speed, the boot space, the price, the price it was, the competition out there. Then you get home and you edit this video and you take this huge file and you condense it down into maybe 12 to 14 minutes. That takes hours, hours, right? It can take, sometimes you run out of time because life gets in the way and dinner has to be made and kids have to be collected. So you go, I'll come back to that tomorrow. But I really want to get the video today, but I don't have time. And then someone comes in and just shits all over your work and questions it in parts that are beyond question because they're statements of fact. And as I said, I, do, I don't have an issue with, if I get something wrong, I'm not saying I, I, I never do. Sometimes you will get things wrong. Like yesterday I, made, I said, so one car had a drag coefficient of 0.29, one had a drag coefficient of 0.28. And I said, so it's slightly ahead. Now what I meant was, the other way around, right? But I'm filming a car on the fly that I've just seen 10 minutes beforehand. And I replied to them and said, well, yeah, sometimes you, you'll reverse your, you know, you make a mistake recording. You, you should try it. And you should try it. If you could do it, set up your YouTube channel. Let's see what you can do. But um, <laughs> as I said, like 99% of stuff is really positive, really, you know, great community, wonderful viewers, subscribers. People come in and watch one video, never look at your channel again because they're just interested in that one car. And I totally get that as well. Um, but it's, it's the, you have to remember, if someone is working in this space, you don't see a huge amount of the research and the time and the effort and blah, blah, blah. And why would you? I don't, I don't want to know what the details of your job are. You turn up, you get paid, you go home again. This is the exact same. My issue is when you come on to a video and you spout lies or you accuse me of not being transparent or because I didn't mention the fact that Peugeot and Citroen are the same bleeding company and that makes me uh, you know a false reviewer or spreading lies it's like Jesus do I really need this grief so I, I get it I, I get the like I have mentioned price drops of EVs um, there's no hiding the fact that the prices have dropped I get DMs from people all the time. Should I buy this now? Because I've seen this has gone cheaper. It's now a good time to buy. If you want to never lose any money, don't buy a new car. Full stop. It doesn't matter what's fueling it. Um, do I think electric cars... Like, I, again, I, I, have, I spend more time looking online, finding out signs, reading comments from other people who are maybe on a database of a brand because they bought previous cars. And they're saying, got a phone call last week such and such a car there's 10 grand off right now are you interested and you won't find that information really you know that's not in the public domain as such it's in car enthusiast forums but i'm taking that information i'm, I'm finding that i'm like oh okay that's there's a little nugget that might be so i put that into the video that's relevant to that car and i say make sure you shop around because you know did a cooper born video last year um it was at it was nice the, the price of the car was nearly sixty thousand euro in that particular one why you, why you mentioning false prices? I'm like, that's the price right now. That's the price that I get from the brand. And that's the price that it is currently online. But again, you get these kind of stupid comments accusing you of not being transparent because it's something they don't agree with. Or, you know, one of the reasons some people watch videos is they buy a car. They want someone to evaluate and sort of say nice things about it because they've spent their hard-earned money on it. And I get that. But... If they don't agree with what you're saying, they'll have this big, huge rant. And you're like, but I didn't, but I haven't. And it's only a thing in the last maybe six months. So I do feel it's being driven by anti-EV sentiment, frustration over the prices. As I said, I, I do get that. I understand if you genuinely had been burnt on a car and have family members who've bought EVs at higher prices and the same car is worth quite quite a bit less and they went to get a price on the trade in and it's like it's just not viable to change you know and and i get that but if you're someone who's coming on to just have a rant about your car that you were never going to buy anyway 
uh, and then accuse the person who's taken the time and the effort to make this video of spreading lies. Why aren't you talking about the real range? I was like, because no one's driven the car yet. And when I do drive the car, I will tell you how much charge has gone into it. I will tell you what the onboard computer is actually saying versus the WLTP figure. Show me the videos where I haven't. So, yeah, it's a, it's a weird time to be um, reviewing cars. There's a lot of anti EV sentiment. I am, I've reviewed, I still do review diesel cars, petrol cars, hybrid cars, whatever is going, I'll do it. And let me tell you, in Ireland, it's not exactly a huge business. Um, so you've got to work it. Those subscribers I have, have taken, heading into now six years of hard work, hours of editing, hours of researching cars, filming cars, collecting and dropping cars, because it's a job. But my issue is when you come into my office or my workplace or my floor, my colleagues are all the comments down below. It's fully transparent. You can watch a video whenever you want. Whenever you, you can go back and watch a video that's up there six years if you, if you like. My issue is when you come onto my channel and start accusing me of misinformation, not being transparent, when I literally set out to do exactly that in every single review. And as I said, if I make a mistake, I make a mistake. But I certainly... Uh, do not come on here to start misrepresenting um, energy consumption or I have I never mentioned the price of EVs dropping? Is that not a thing? Have I not mentioned that on literally every relevant video? But uh, I'm sorry for not saying that Peugeot and Citroen are the same company. Oh, and, and Opel too. Yep, Stellantis. You should Google them. There's loads of information out bit there about them. So, sorry this is a bit of a rant. Um... Just need to kind of get it off my chest because it's really starting to just... And you could spend all day replying to these comments. And you kind of do feel like you have to defend yourself because, as I said, all you have is your reputation. All I have is my opinion. If you don't agree with it, that's fine. But that's all I have, my opinion and my reputation. And I certainly set out to make the best quality uh, videos I can um, with with armed with as much information as I can and then a little bit of opinion about should you buy the car, is it too expensive, whatever it is. Um, but when it turns into, you're spreading lies, I'm just like, really? I might do something else, because this is a bit of a pain. Uh, anyway, um, let me know. Prices, EVs, normal cars, have you been stung? What are, what are your thoughts? Um, Please do comment down below. But yeah, it's a weird, angry mob time to be making YouTube videos. And as I said, I get it. But when it's when it turns into a, a personal thing, when the person is actually annoyed with a brand or whatever, I'm the messenger. Don't shoot the messenger.